Japan. Jesus. Two things that sometimes combine. Free. Today, Japan is largely irreligious. In fact, it has one of the largest percentages of atheist people in the world. Temples are frequently visited, but these are largely ceremonial. With all of that said, it seems kind of odd to imagine, but for a brief period of time in the 16th century, Japan's fastest growing religion was Christianity. With the arrival of the Portuguese to Japan, they brought along with them goods, guns, Jesus. missionaries went among the people and began teaching the Bible. This was largely tolerated by the Japanese shogun because they were getting trade out of it. The Chinese had banned any trade with Japan, so going through European middlemen kept that porcelain and silk coming in. And also, those guns were certainly useful. The side effect of this brief toleration was that a prominent minority of Japanese had become devout Catholics, mainly in the South. Cracks began forming between the Portuguese traders and Japanese leaders. By the time Japan reunified under the Tokugawa shogunate, the new government had lost patience with this foreign religion. Christianity was seen as subversive, and that's when the crackdowns began. If you're familiar with early Christian history, you know the drill. Persecution, martyrdom, the classic 200 AD stuff. Thanks to this, along with general discontent with the government, there was a rebellion primarily of Christians in the South. Peasants took up the cross, prophecies were foretold, and spoilers, it didn't end up well. I'm going to be honest, this video was directly inspired by a recent Kings and Generals video about the Shimabara Rebellion. I'm going to try to avoid stepping on this video's toes as much as I can. So if you want the full context of Christianity in Japan, watch this video first and then come back. If you just want a brief idea though, there was Christianity in Japan until there wasn't. But what if somehow Christianity didn't stop rising? What if Japan had largely became Christian? Thanks to the Portuguese, Nagasaki and southern Japan quickly became a hub of Christian activity. Like, followers in the hundreds of thousands, even samurai and daimyo were becoming converts. Japan had recently been unified under the Tokugawa shogunate, and to the shogunate, Christianity was subversive against the culture and stability of Japan. You're not loyal to the emperor when you're loyal to the pope. Which, you know, that's... That's kind of true. This wasn't the only reason, though. Missionaries were loud, they had no regard for Japanese cultural traditions, and they were even having converts desecrate temples and Shinto icons. So, upon hearing that the Spanish and Portuguese had colonies across the world, the Japanese feared that they might be next. The thing is, it's an uphill battle for Christianity no matter what. There are a few factors that need to happen for Christianity to even have a chance to grow in this alternate timeline. 1. There is no Shimabara Rebellion. That was one of the final straws that broke the camel's back for the Shogun. The Europeans were immediately blamed and trade was cut off for the most part. But, two, there would be no Shimabara Rebellion if there's no Tokugawa Shogunate. Now, imagining Japan without the Tokugawa pretty much changes the last 500 years of Japanese history. This was a period of unity and isolation that kind of really did help Japan. They had two centuries of total peace. For Christianity to spread, we might have to imagine that this Warring States period simply continues on far longer than in our timeline. Perhaps another century. Because if Japan isn't able to unify as quickly, they have far less of a united front against outside forces, and in this case, religion. Now you might say, the Emperor still exists, wouldn't they do something to stop this? Well, the Emperor was much more of a figurehead, and without any prominent military power, they'd kind of be powerless to enforce any ban on Christendom. What I'm saying here is that without a century authority, the Catholics have free reign to influence the island. Oh, Cody, is that what's gonna happen here too? Well, while 9 times out of 10, I would probably say that this ends in some alternate divvying up between colonial powers, I'm not so sure that's the case here. In this alternate timeline, does Japan suddenly become a Portuguese colony? Does it fall to the same fate as China because it didn't shut itself off from the rest of the world? 
Well, no. And that's because of a few things. One, Japan really just wasn't worth colonizing. Japan was too well defended in advance to even attempt a hostile takeover. Two, Japan, especially during the Warring States period, had become masters of warfare and adept at picking up European weapons, reverse engineering them, and building their own. I mean, it took 200 years of isolation and an industrial revolution in the West for the Japanese to even become concerned by the outside world. So we continue on to an alternate 1600s. Christianity spreads and becomes an actual cultural force, with more and more daimyos converting. What becomes simply a divide between rivals, becomes a divide between religions and cultures. The Warring States period blends into a new conflict over faith. Whether or not the Christian daimyos may win, I cannot say. For the sake of time, think of this like Rome, where Christians were a minority of the population and persecuted until they weren't and suddenly the state is Christian. And hey, perhaps they can even keep their emperor. Take a formerly native idea and translate it for the population to better accept. The emperor is not simply ordained by the sun goddess Amaterasu, but by, you know, god-god. While it might seem like a stretch, if the Christian population becomes big enough, this might be the way that the emperor might go. What type of Christianity there would be in Japan really depends on how tolerated the Portuguese are. The shoguns liked the Dutch because they didn't push their faith. But with no shoguns, and a very persistent Portuguese, those Jesuit missionaries would be the main influence of Christianity the Japanese would get, not Dutch Protestantism. The main important thing here is that even if there is eventually another unified shogunate, they simply don't have the influence to stamp out all of Christianity like they were able to in our timeline, and it only grows from there. Japan for quite some time was believed to be massive, and while Japan is big compared to Europe, about the size of the US West Coast, it isn't nearly as big as they believed. In fact, there was somewhat of a fascination in this early relationship between the Catholic world and Japan. Japan was a mystical land that Portugal and Spain believed was prime for conversion. It wasn't until the Shogun spat that idea down that relations became more openly hostile. Let's imagine that, just like Rome, Japan converts. Japan historically has been pretty homogenous compared to other civilizations. The only infighting that ever really happened was between who would be the ultimate shogun under the emperor, or to kick out the Ainu from the north. Socially and culturally, there was never much division, yet with the introduction of Christianity, this brings in a cultural new division that Japan never had before. Daimyos, samurai, and peasants now could be divided between worldviews. Those former pagan idols and ideas are either wiped out or slapped with Christian paint. Much like the last samurai of our own timeline, those that refuse to adopt Christianity probably create a new refuge on Hokkaido, the last remnant of an old Japan. Buddhist and Shinto thinking molds the theology and new hotbeds of Eastern Christian thought like Nagasaki and Osaka. Without the Tokugawa, Edo, now Tokyo, never becomes the center of Japanese politics. It's very likely Kyoto remains the capital, both politically and eventually religiously. It may truly become a blend between Eastern and Western thought, even down to, well, the writing style. In Catholicism, regardless of your language, Latin up until Vatican II was the language of mass. Japanese churches would speak and write to discuss theology in Latin, and from that, it's possible this leads to more acceptance of the Latin alphabet. While never outright replacing their own writing system of characters and kanji, perhaps even creating an alternate Latinized Japanese system, we first saw this actually with the Nippo Jisho, a translation of 30,000 words from Japanese to Portuguese for the sake of converting peasants. Had the religion never been banned and Christian documents destroyed, Portugal would have been Japan's window to the Western world. Now, from a traditionalist Japanese perspective, this all sounds horrifying. First a foreign faith comes in, then the emperor changes from the descendant of a god to simply blessed by god, to now Latin itself taking over. That's a lot to take in. 
But this is something that is repeated multiple times throughout history. A new religion will come in, upend the old, and society, even down to the writing style, will transform. As dramatic as changing the writing style sounds, Keep in mind, before the 20th century, most people didn't really write. It was a tool for the elite. So we're talking about the 1% no longer writing in a similar style. Yet, if there is a new positive that the Japanese would see gained from this conversion, it would be a new connection to the West. They would not be exploited by colonial powers. This would be an equal relationship. And the effect of this is it changes early modern Europe's view on Japan. This would be a Christian kingdom on the other side of the world, something that we never really saw in our timeline. While that period of isolation was great for the country internally, it also soured any positive notes Europe previously had towards Japan. Then by the time Americans rolled up in their gunboats, any former respect that was seen between the Western world and Japan had been pretty much forgotten. And by that time, we had scientific racism. I don't want to get demonetized, but I will bring up the racial aspect to this. What determined the other for exploration era Europeans wasn't simply race, but faith. Yes, different phenotypes existed and people looked different, but what mattered most was whether or not they followed Jesus or not. Faith evolved into views on civilization and soon onto views of race, which is why when the Japanese were originally flirting with the idea of Christianity, they were depicted as more closer to Europeans. But by the time of Matthew Perry, they were seen as the yellow other. I know it sounds weird, but faith was the original basis for early European racism on what is civilized or not. As much as Japan is losing that aspect of its natural identity, Europe frankly has a far greater relationship with Japan if they had adopted Christianity in the 17th century. What can I say? People historically have gotten along with others that have similar beliefs. Ain't that shocking. Imagine a Japan that keeps up to date with technological advancements in military warfare from the 1600s onto the 1860s. It was always going to modernize, but it just so happens that in this alternate timeline, it's a lot more gradual instead of over the span of a generation. While I know some of you clicked on this video imagining crusading samurai or Catholic Japanese soldiers fighting in the Thirty Years' War, I'm sorry to be a bummer, but this couldn't really be the case. Keep in mind, Japan's Warring States period ended officially in 1615. It shut itself off from the world in 1603. Now, religion can spread fast, but it needs a few generations to stick. That's why I gave this a century-long window for Christianity to realistically spread among the peasantry. So even if Japan did end up adopting Catholicism after all of this, it'd still be by the early 1700s that they would unify. Not really a time of crusading samurai anymore. In fact, Japan largely skips the real bloodshed of the Protestant Reformation. Portugal, which in this timeline would be Japan's greatest connection to Europe, would be replaced by the Dutch. There's a few ways I can imagine this interaction playing out. The Japanese, while Christian, are so far removed from the politics of Europe that they'd rather trade with the West for Chinese goods more than anything else, maintaining a friendly relationship with the Dutch regardless of faith. Or there is a swell of newfound Catholic zeal birthed by this new conversion, making Japan late to the party when it came to religious wars, at least compared to a Europe that got all of that out of its system. For the sake of picking one, I'm going to lean towards the Japanese disliking the Dutch, which is ironic considering how much they liked them in our own timeline. This newfound hatred has nothing to do with religious differences. It's mainly politics. Mostly. In this alternate timeline, I can see it being very possible that Japan develops a good relationship with Spain. Thanks to centuries of trade, Japan would already be familiar with the Portuguese, and the Spanish Philippines, who are the next closest connection to Christendom the converted Japanese would have. The problem for Japan when it comes to these European empires is they kind of backed the wrong horse. No amount of Japanese conversions were going to save Portugal and Spain from falling into irrelevancy. It's likely that by the time Japan rises as a power, wars eventually stop being waged purely over religion, 
and moreover markets and colonies. Moving on to other things, a failed invasion of Korea was also what led to that period of isolation. Instead of Korea being annexed in a 19th century world, it's instead slowly conquered and colonized by an ever-growing Japanese population. Hey, maybe it's Japan's new mission to convert the Koreans. Just as the Ainu were pushed from northern Japan until the island was homogenized, this peninsula soon becomes another part of the Japanese realm. It's people pushed to Manchuria, if they're not in entirely assimilated. Japan without isolation just colonizes slower, and because of that, their influence in East Asia has a longer lasting effect, generations upon generations of Japanese domination. And throughout this whole time, Japan is still fighting alternate skirmishes and wars with European powers. Just as every nation at some point fought from the 18th to 20th centuries, so would Japan, but never truly falling to any power. Even with slightly improved military technology, I can't imagine Japan could just strong arm the Qing into opening up. The Qing was at their height of power in the early 1700s. If Japan wanted to exploit that, they might have to wait until the next century, like everyone else. Personally, I don't think Japan was ever going to conquer the Pacific. If they did, they would be competing against the Dutch East India Company for Indonesia, as well as turning against the Spanish for the Philippines. I think they'd be more interested in colonizing a bit further north, while also maintaining good relations with Europeans. Unluckily for Japan, it just so happens that their new rival wouldn't be from Europe. Thanks to its location on the globe and sharing an ocean with the United States, in time there was always going to be some clash between these two. Japan is still a power that would rival the US and the Pacific, so it's inevitable that they would come to blows. It's possible that instead of some massive Pacific War, Japan and the US fight in a smaller conflict over a few islands, maybe the Philippines. It's an interesting possibility that Japan may still be allies with Spain, and help it hold out against the Americans when the time comes. This alternate Spanish-American war may evolve into the Spanish-Japanese and American war, which is a far more costly endeavor for the US trying to get into the empire business, not really a splendid little war like it was in our timeline. In the slimmest possibility that somehow Japan was able to convert to Christianity, it would largely be a societal change for Japan more than anything on the global stage. Even in the best possible scenario, Japan following a true conversion to Christianity still sees the turmoil that changing religions does for a civilization. The old order is destroyed or adopted in some way. Political clans and structures are at best weakened and at worst toppled. Japan's isolation actually did do a fair amount of good. It missed out on an age of enlightenment, sure, but it also missed the instability that came with it. And by the time Japan no longer could ignore the outside world, they adapted without missing a beat. While Japan does become more respected by the European empires because of their conversion, this is saying very little. European empires hated one another for the pettiest of reasons, and Japan wouldn't escape this regardless of faith. By the time they really do unify, it would be after religious faith for Europe kinda didn't matter anymore. Japan reinvented itself and rebuilt its society from the ground up to become a Catholic nation, only for its Catholic allies to basically bite the dust. This is Cody of Alternate History Hub.